So here we are in GeoGebra, and we're going to look at how to calculate binomial probabilities within GeoGebra itself. So when you go to GeoGebra.org, you'll end up at this page. Since we're working with probabilities, now we're going to want to select probability. So what this will do is open our window, and yeah, that looks good. Um, so it's automatically going to start with our normal curve, which is something that we actually talk about later. So what we want to do is we don't want a normal model, and what we want to do is select this drop-down menu. So where you select normal, it's going to list all these different types of probabilities, and what you'll notice is that there's a binomial option. So when we select binomial, it's going to change the screen a little bit. It's going to change to these discrete cases, which is what we have. Um, so to set it up, to set it up, we need to have our value for n and our value for p. So remember, n is our uh, number of trials, and p is our probability of success. So if we go to our free thrower, and her making 82% of her baskets, and we're looking at the example where she's going to shoot 10 free throws in a row. That means there's going to be these 10 trials, and her probability of success is 0.82. So plugging in that value for n, plugging in that value for p, sets up our curve right here. It sets the probabilities that there's a high probability of landing here. That's why the um, bars have a high height there. And the probabilities decrease as there's a lower and lower number. And notice we have our numbers 0 through 10 here in terms of her making 0 free throws up to making all 10 free throws. So in part A, where we calculated what's the probability that she makes exactly 5 free throws, for the probabilities where we want exactly, which is the idea of finding the height of just this bar here at x equals 5, our exact probabilities are listed over on this right-hand side here. So you can see it's shading 4 through 6 right now, and you can see 4 through 6 is shaded here as well. But our probability for 5, all we want to do is focus on this value right here. If we look at where k equals 5, we see 0 0.0177 right there. And that's the probability that we calculated. So whenever you're looking for exact probabilities, they're all on this right-hand side here listed. So if we wanted to know the probability of exactly eight free throws being made, then it would be this 29.8%. So you can see those listed there. For part B, where we said what's the probability that she makes nine or 10 free throws, we want nine or 10. So what we want to do is end up shading those two or what you could also do is look on this right-hand side and add those probabilities together, um, taking that 0 0.3017 plus 0.1374, and that would work just as well. Or if you want to shade, um, this will shade areas to the left, this button will shade areas in between, and this one will shade areas above. And what we could do is shade between 9 and 10, so it'll select those two values. And there we go. And we get this 0.4392, which is also what would come out from adding those. It might be a little different because these, er uh, these values on the right-hand side are, might be rounded at that fourth decimal place. But if we have error at the fourth decimal place, that's OK. We just don't want major error closer to the um, decimal. But uh, 0.4392 works perfectly. Um, for part C, what's the probability that she makes two or fewer? So we want to do is shade from two and below, which we can see there's not much height to the bars there, which matches up with the answer that we found is zero before. So we want to shade this area to the left, so we want our left sided, and we want to go all the way up to two. And this, it just rounds to zero for you right there, and that's where we got that answer of zero out. So you want to use these buttons to make sure you're shading to the right um, side. Uh, make sure that you're paying attention to inequality in that where this one said the probability that she makes two or fewer free throws, we do want to include two. Like we want to shade two and everything below. If it had said what's the probability that she makes fewer than two, then we wouldn't want to include two. So we just have one and zero shaded. So just be careful of whether or not we have equality. And then in part D, where it asks for the expected number and the standard deviation, 
GeoGebra actually calculates this for you right up here in this upper left-hand corner. There's our mean of 8.2. There's that standard deviation of 1.21. So while we can calculate these by hand, GeoGebra does a nice job of calculating it for you, and you're welcome to use this technology.